Everest. I have been wanting to do this video for a while. You have? I oh, have. This is actually... So this video originally wasn't even supposed to be like this. Things mm. have just happened, we've got a new sword, so things we, have just evolved we and do. we're finally getting around to it. We have teased the f more fair comparison between Japan and medieval Europe. People always do katana versus longsword. I've done it as well, but I've also made a dedicated video saying it's, there's some problems with that comparison. You can check out that video where it's not necessarily the best comparison. If you really wanted a fair comparison between Japanese sword and medieval European sword, you'd be looking at something like the O Katana, which is bigger katana, mm -hmm. and the Kriegsmesser. But since we were teasing this video, we've, we've gotten another sword. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful two-handed falchion. I'm lucky enough that I have used all three of these swords in mm -hmm. multiple videos for multiple tests. So I'm, I kind of know all my thoughts and answers on these sorts of things. Well, you're also unlucky enough to have been able to put together things like long swords and katanas and make Absolute abomination. Absolute amazing combinations of the strengths of both. More on this later, by the way. <sighs> So the Kriegsmesser literally translates to war knife in German. It's a German design. And one of the reasons it's called a knife is because you can see the tang all the way through the blade. It's held by two sets of scales, wooden scales in this instance, and held in with pins. It's really, really close to a knife design in general, but obviously it's for war. And one of the things that is missing from this design is the nail or nagel that was actually held just as a little knuckle guard, but it is a, beast of a sword and uh, I'm looking forward to cutting with it. This here is the two-handed falchion. Well, what is a falchion? Well, it's a classification of a sword that basically means a medieval sword that has a single edge. They come in a whole bunch of different types of blade profiles, shapes, stuff like that. But the main differentiation between something like a two-handed falchion and a Kriegsmesser is the handle construction. The handle construction is much more akin to a sword rather than a knife. Now, talking about the two-handed falchion specifically, we don't actually really have any surviving examples but it is depicted in things like artwork. And we can assume, since there are surviving examples of things like Kriegsmessers, that there probably was a little bit of crossover. So this here is the two-handed falchion. The O Katana, which basically means big katana. And to compare, this is the standard size of a normal katana and the O Katana. And for me, that's been one of the things that have given the katana a bit of a, a short hand when being compared against things like longsword because it has less reach. It's a smaller sword. So comparing it to the O Katana is much more comparable. If you're familiar with Japanese swords, you might have heard of the sword called the Nodachi, which is a really, really big Japanese sword. We're talking about something like great sword in size, but you're gonna notice a similar type of language terminology with that. There is a sword that is similar in size to the O Katana, and that means it's bigger than a regular katana, which is the Tachi. And the bigger version of the Tachi is the Otashi, or as language kind of evolves, Nodachi bigger version of the Tashi and the O Katana, bigger version of the Katana. Some of these were just rehilted Tachi blades and that means their curve is going to be slightly different because Tachis usually had a steeper kind of angle coming off from the hilt. But some were actually just dedicated Katana blades that were made bigger and they have longer handles. And when comparing to the European equivalent like the Kriegsmesser or two-handed falchion, yeah, we are seeing a much more similar size. The title of this video is Katana versus Kriegsmesser and we picked that title because the most popular single-edged two-handed medieval sword is by far the Kriegsmesser. Few people actually know that there are two-handed falchions very similar. In actual fact, really the only difference between this two-handed falchion and this Kriegsmesser is the handle construction. You could take this identical blade, give it the handle construction of a sword, it's now a two-handed falchion. And so what then really is the most fair sword to pick in the comparison? And I actually think it's the two-handed falchion for this main reason. It's going to be more representative of the way European swords will feel and function because most European swords were of course made like swords. The fact that messes existed and they had handle constructions made by knives is more of an exception in regards to overall sword 
con handle construction in medieval Europe. The handle construction of katanas and the oak katanas is quite standard and therefore the fairest sword to compare this against in the European ones is the one that has the more common European handle construction which is the two-handed falchion not actually the Kriegsmesser. But in regards to how well the blade functions in comparison, the profile of the blade, the flex and everything like that, it's going to be identical to the Kriegsmesser, but in terms of how comfortable the handle feels in use, the reverberation and impact, that's actually going to be somewhat different because the handle construction is different. And therefore, again, why well, I think it's more important to go with the falchion, because that is more representative of what European swords were like. When people learned that European swords had single edge curved two-handed swords, they often have compared it to katanas and they have sometimes said that say the Kriegsmesser is the European version of the katana. And you can easily kind of identify the same similarity with the two-handed falchion, especially by the fact that they could have identical blade profiles as the uh, Kriegsmesser. There's actually a significant amount of difference in the blade geometry of these two swords. You already see it on profile, the falchion has a wider blade than the katana. It also has a more significant and aggressive distal taper, which means it gets thinner towards the tip along this plane. See how thick it is here? And then how much it thins out towards the tip. In contrast to the Okatana, there is far less distal taper. That makes the Okatana feel more top heavy. The two-handed falchion has a, a pummel, which creates a counterbalance. So that already is going to change the dynamic and feel of the sword. And added to the fact that it is thinner at the tip means that it's going to be less top heavy. These things alone, even though there's more differences than just that, actually changes how these swords feel in the hand quite significantly. But cutting isn't the only thing you need to compare against. You you need to compare how maneuverable one sword is versus the other, which would give you an advantage in dueling and just using it generally. The person that can get their blade to make contact with the opponent faster is going to have an advantage. Now in regards to fullers and not, even though this one does have a fuller, it was quite common for Japanese swords to have a fuller as well. There is something that needs to be mentioned about material differences. Katanas and Okatanas were actually quite famous for the way that they were made, but that's also been popularized in the modern day. But we're talking about differential hardening, folded steel. And the interesting thing is, in regards to folded steel, that was done in Europe. And so it's actually kind of fair to consider both swords and pretend or say that they are made out of the same type of steel in terms of folded differential hardy, how flexible they are. The best European swords were spring steel. And this falchion here is actually spring steel. Now, katanas, like this is not made out of uh, differentially hardened steel. It has some flex, but by the very geometry and design of the blade with the thicker spine, it has less flex. It might actually be spring steel though. Uh, it's just a, a high, high carbon steel and it has some level of, actually, no, that's got flex, that's got flex. Okay, so that's probably gonna be fair. Even though more traditional Okatanas are not gonna be spring steel. This is one that's made, got a more modern blade on it. But that will give us interesting feedback in the test cutting because I have not found a traditional katana or o katana that was made out of spring steel. There's been people putting forward that uh, there was different smelting technology or techniques, different types of tatara that enabled them making high carbon mono steel that could be tempered into spring steel. Could be doesn't mean that there were. I still need to see valid evidence, which is either evidence in art, better yet surviving examples showing a katana that is has a spring temper on it. I've never seen it. Common information about the katana is that none of them were made that way. Or if, uh, so is there even one? Especially with the traditional way that they're made, you can't put a spring temper on katanas that are made in the more classic traditional method. They need to be through hardened, mono steel. I don't have the example. In contrast, we have surviving so examples of swords in museums that have spring tempers on them. So, Regardless though, both of these swords seem like they are spring steel. What this really means is that this O katana is actually going to be a bit more durable than your standard traditional katana. We kind of want that with this test because what we really want to test is not material strength. We've already done that on videos here where we've done um, basically spring steel versus traditional 
way it's made. That's the, our $200 longsword versus $1,000 katana video. What we really want to test here is the design and geometry. Okay, how well does this maneuver? How well does it cut in the hand? And those types of things. And we can do that with these two swords quite adequately. So those are the main things to really discuss about these two swords. Now let's get into some actual testing. For me, the Okatana just feels so much better. Point of clarification, I mean that it feels so much better than a standard regular size katana. I'm not sure if it's because it's got a longer handle and I got more leverage as a result, but I already feel so much better because it's got the length I prefer. This is like much more comparable long sword length, which means reach, keeping your opponent at their comfortable distance that I like in terms of combat. And then this sword just feels so much more powerful. Like it has a little bit more weight, but it doesn't feel unreasonable by any means. One of my big pet peeves of the katana was the length and also the way it's made. I prefer spring, spring steel. This one, I think actually is spring steel. So it really overcomes some of my biggest pet peeves. And as a result, like genuinely, this is a brilliant sword. I really do like it, okay? In terms of maneuverability, obviously you can't do reverse edge cuts. And so as a result, I know in the martial art, but also just by holding it, the way that you want to use it, you feel like you need, you're gonna be doing more dedicated kind of cuts. And it, it feels like a cutting beast, but this is my kind of perception on the Okatana. Let's see what the other guys think. See, for me, two-handed swords aren't my forte, but I do like them. I feel like with this, it is definitely a precision weapon. And obviously, used by samurai in the battlefield, it was precision. But compared to some of the other two-handeds that I've actually fought with, this feels definitely heavier in the cut, like you're meant to know exactly where you're going, with a lot more time between strikes. However, the amount of maneuverability you have at the tip feels like you can change direction pretty quickly. Not my favorite overall, but the length of the blade and length of the handle definitely feels like this would be a beast in wartime. I like the sword no matter what Shad or Nate says. It's a beautiful blade, and this one here we have used for a multitude of things. I, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, I like this sword too. How much do you like this sword? A lot, I but... Just, I just said I like that sword. I don't know, usually like Western well, you, swords. What are you saying we don't like the sword? Because you don't like the sword. Let me ask you this, what's your favorite? The Tachi, the Kriegsmesser, or the two-handed falchion? Decide the point. I'm yet to decide. Mm. We're well, going to find out. I'm fascinated. What do you think the answer is going to be? Type now in the comments what you think Shad's answer what will be by the end of the video. What do you think my answer will be? Because this isn't about what I like. This is about which sword is objectively superior. Mm, okay. So it's the two-handed falchion. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> it's worth adding another caveat. Like, these swords don't represent universally every single Okatana and every single two-handed uh, falchion. There's going to be differences. You can get lighter and heavier versions of both of these swords, ones that have stronger distal tapers, ones that have less. Really, this is mostly a comparison between these specific swords. These two individual swords, yes. That we can then kind of gain some measure of uh, understanding points of references that we can apply more broadly as long as you understand it's not going to perfectly represent the no, other swords. To, to preempt this, uh, I actually really like this sword, but I think this is heavier than this, just in general. It That's why it's more It might heavy. be. The thing is, though, the width of katanas can be very deceptive. The width of any sword can be deceptive. Yes. And this is a thicker sword, just on its spine. I don't know. Like, it's tangy, it's thicker, it's got a, a longer... Like, oh, it actually the, might be closer to weight, but... We'll see. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to put it to the test. All right, let us begin with the Okatana. Uh, the, an official weigh-in right here. And look, that's actually decently light for a two-handed sword, 1.2 kilos. That's actually quite light. That's that, in the realm of katana stuff. That's in the realm of my two-handed green longsword. Yep, that's, Let me just that's actually it. smack bang in the realm of that. I love being right. So this one's about 1.222. So genuinely, that's actually a very nice weight for a, a weight I prefer. I like this type of weight. That means this is actually still a very maneuverable light sword for a two-handed sword. And it's compared to this Lockwood long sword. Now just let's look at the length of these two. So the Lockwood is longer, but 
the overall weight of this one is about 1. 1.206. Like, yeah, so it's a little bit lighter. <laughs> I mean, a tiny touch, I, yeah. I find that impressive, honestly. Like, that's about as heavy as even a normal katana. It could just be this is a really nice oak katana. Yeah. yeah like, well, even to, to add on to that point, we've used this sword for a multitude of things. I've cut arrows with it. Like, we've done stuff with this where mm -hmm. I love this sword. It's actually really good. It's a really nice one, yeah. 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 Uh, but let's weigh this. All right. Now, what if you had to hazard a guess, what do you think it's at? 1.5. He's correct. I already. I <laughs> ah! That's still heavier. It is heavier. That's but, like three hundred grams heavier. Bear in mind, we have smaller swords that are even heavier still. Yeah, no, but like it, I'm not. I'm not yeah. disagreeing that it's mm -hmm. a, like it's a little bit heavier, but it's still mm -hmm. perfectly wieldable. I'm saying yes. that this is heavier than this, yeah, and it is. you can notice that. Which is not usually typical for Japanese swords versus European yeah. swords. What we're seeing here is the effect of the pummel. The pummel is making a counterbalance to maintain this sword's maneuverability, even though it is heavier. Because look, when I'm using this, like maneuvering it around, okay, this feels as maneuverable as that katana, oh katana. You reckon that's fair, Tyron? That's fair, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. That's fair. Now, the thing is though, there is a pet peeve I have with this. And it's that it is single edge. I prefer double edged swords for the fact that you can strike with the back edge, okay? You just can't do that. Now, in terms of that limitation, I'm actually falling into the same type of combative strikes that I felt more needed to or it was more natural to with the Okatana. As a result, I'm feeling like I'm naturally fighting the same way with this one, with one important caveat. And it's the cross guard. Yes, the cross guard is definitely going to be giving you greater kind of protection, but I still feel like the type of combat I'm adopting is very similar to the Okatana. I'm interested in what the guys now think. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't really have anything to add to what Shad said. I agree with him. Double edged swords are simply superior. Yeah. Okay. You know what's fun sometimes at Shadowversity is just to stand back and not add anything. But just watch the show because seeing Tyrant's face then continuously nod was kind of amusing. But something that I would like to add with these is the counterweight like Chad was talking about because that means all of a sudden if you need to you can use this one-handed. Compared to the Okatana which yes you can use one-handed but not as proficiently because you don't have a lot of balance. What's the point of balance between these two swords? It's a good point. Okay. Let's figure it out. All right, so our point of balance comparison. Mm -hmm. So to find the point mm -hmm. of balance. I feel like, oh, uh, just off, just um, off. Right here. Yeah, and mine is, oh, that's such a fine point. Wow, okay, so this looks like it's a full inch higher at least. It does indeed. So there's more weight in the hilt yes. for the two-handed falchion than this one, which makes sense. It's got a, it's got a cross guard and pummel. So was I right? No. Well, right Just because what? I want to say no. About how that's more top heavy. Honestly, in terms of maneuverability, what is your thoughts as to which one feels more maneuverable between the two? Whether it's right or left, they both feel both as maneuverable as each other. They are very, I know you guys are going to disagree, but these are quite light to me. I, no, I'm actually not going to disagree. I think they feel almost equivalently maneuverable. And I said mm. that when I was comparing, I, I feel like I want to fight the same way, but they're far more similar than different. I agree with this. There is actually a very significant point to bring up now. Tyrant has just said that these feel nearly equivalently maneuverable. Yes. Which is the heavier sword? That one. That's actually an achievement. That's a, that's a, a, a point of praise that this sword being, what was it? A good three pounds heavier, or no, no, sorry, 300 grams. 300 grams heavier, right? That it actually feels perfectly equivalent in maneuverability to the lighter sword. Yeah, that, um, that's, that's, yeah that's, that's a genuine point of praise. And I think it's coming down to... So out of the results of these tests, like they're very uh, equivalent. They're, they're very equivalent in maneuverability, honestly. I still think this one has more protection, but the fact that this achieves such maneuverability by being heavier is a credit to the design of it. Fair. Mm -hmm. but they both feel the same at the end of the day and the only difference well we can get to it which well, is cutting it is mm. we should get to cutting now there's an important caveat that i need to mention before we begin this cutting test because these two swords are so similar the thing that's going to have a greater impact onto the difference of performance is actually going to be their sharpness of edge 
moreover than say the weight distribution, the ease of edge alignment or any of those other factors. We've tested these swords like on our thumb, they feel mostly similar in sharpness but that is down to our own imperfect way of perceiving it ourselves and one could actually be that little bit more blunt than the other which could end up having a more significant impact because pool noodles are just, can sometimes be deceptively difficult to cut even when there's a slight difference in sharpness. We're still going to do it because it's good to compare overall performance to really see for ourselves in the hand how easy it is for ourselves to get a good effective cuts. It's going to be more down to edge alignments because that could also cause a significant difference. If, if we're just finding it easier to get better edge alignment with one sword versus another, you will actually see some significant difference in the results. The next test I think is actually going to be even more significant and that's when we actually try Try cutting some wood because then we're going to really feel how well these swords handle impact and reverb in the handle but ah uh, let's get into cutting some pool noodles now i know the other boys are going to be doing two-handed strikes so i figure to uh make my point i'm going to do a few one-handed strikes both some big ones and some little ones and we see how it goes as i power down through these shots so powerful Good, nice and easy. A little less power, we cut most of the way through and less power again and we only get halfway through, but it's still pretty beastly for one hand. Now let's try it with the two-handed falchion. So again, powerful cut straight through. Medium cut on the other side, there seemed to be a bit of flex. That could have been my own edge alignment, but a just a gentle backhand actually was a little more powerful, though I do feel there was a little more slicing motion. I have to admit, it did seem pretty similar. This one, it feels nice. It's like it feels it wants to cut. So I'm just going to actually focus on some of these powerful downwards ones. Very nice. Falchion feels more balanced. It's weird, but I guess we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> Oakley doakley, let's, uh, let's cut some pool noodles. I'm going to start off with uh, the tachi. And as expected, it feels beautiful. <laughs> I think we've covered this in, well, Shad has covered this in a different video, and that is the handle construction of the katana actually lends itself to some positive attributes. I'll discuss those a little bit later with Shad, because I've got a feeling they're going to come up again with another test. It's time for the two-hand falchion. Now, something to mention is... In terms of sharpness, they're both basically the same. Shad mentioned this before. However, because of the blade uh, 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 shape on this particular one, it does make it a little bit more unforgiving when it comes to edge alignment. So that's actually like a, a big thing with this one in particular. But I'm good at everything. <laughs> I thought I was going to mess one up. <laughs> I was powering down the shots that as I was, was going through. That was not powerful. I just not the same power the whole time. No, no, Each time, I, I, no difference. I think no we difference. can all say honestly, between us all, they performed about equivalent. Yeah, they really did. They really did. I think what we need to do. Yes. Is I agree. Performance, yes, but but how did they feel? Their feelings. Okay, okay. Because they so, felt different. I, they did feel different. This is my honest opinion. Feelings are important. I, I was purposely doing the same cut where I needed to loop around and get back and then get back. I found the loop was easier on the two-handed falchion, yep. but the uh, Okatana felt nicer going through. That is the important distinction because when you're cutting through, whatever you're cutting through, the medium you're cutting through, all those vibrations from the blade travel somewhere. Yeah. And when it comes to something like the katana or the touchy, katana for this video, it's just easy for me to- Oh, katana. katana. It is a katana, it's an o katana. For the katana for this video, the, uh, the vibrations, well, where do they travel, Chad? Well, they go right into the handle. Mm. But where into the handle? Well, it depends. Well, it, it depends on where the tang ends. Yes, but for the most part, they're going into those pins as well. So on the Okatana, there is a wooden pin here and a wooden pin here. And the tang does not travel all the way down to the very end. So what that means is the vibration actually gets sucked by the pins and then sent into the wooden handle, which actually absorbs that vibration yeah. in a nicer, more efficient way. It also means the overall handle construction is easier to damage it and is, break apart. But it's also easier to fix. Mm -hmm. It's easier to fix as well. Well, I, I think we can we all agree for this particular when we're cutting through something like a pool noodle, uh, medium, a water bottle, something like that, for those specific mediums, the katana handle construction 
feels better because of how it absorbs or the upon vibration. Upon impact. Upon impact, yes. I, I'm perfectly, uh, yeah, absolutely, I actually agree with that. And that's what I observe. But remember, I found the falchion was easier to redirect mm. and reset. I was about to say the same thing. This feels like if you have a lot more room in, say, a duel or a warfare, I'd want that. But given how chaotic battles can get, I still want this. More weight around the hand for blocking. Uh, I, f I feel like it's a little more... It may not cut as heavily, may not cut as deeply. Well-rounded? A little more well-rounded. So I'm trying to actually remember, because we should try and list every pro and every con, okay? Oh, that would be a so, big list. Well, no, 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 the, 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 the ones, because in terms of overall maneuverability, that's equivalent, right? But in terms of uh, redirecting the blade point and cutting, mm -hmm. I think that actually went towards the falchion. I will agree with this, mm -hmm. but... However, <laughs> however, I will defer back to that might just be a strength issue. For me, I don't notice any discernible difference. You're just so strong. I didn't you know say what? it like that. I didn't <laughs> say it like that. Speaking just... <laughs> about strength, gentlemen, how about what we do is instead of cutting some bull noodles, we have to put a bit of strength into the yeah, next yeah, shot. Yeah, we cut something more solid. Yeah. Uh, I did want to try and figure out the other pros and cons and everything. Sure. Because, yes, comfort... In, in the cut is a pro for this. Hand protection is a pro. That's a big pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's a, a pro. very big pro. These are some pretty equivalent kind of, oh, yeah. like if you prefer comfort in a cut, less vibration, you will probably go with a Japanese sword construction. If you prefer greater maneuverability to redirect that tip and go for another cut, you would go for something that has a more Balanced. central balance. Yeah. Uh, and I would say, there's still a little bit more testing to be done. However, I, like I said during the testing, this sword, I know I didn't demonstrate it, but this sword does have a different blade profile, which mm -hmm. makes it a little less unforgiving when it has uh, equivalent sharpness, basically. This thing, because it has such beautiful points that meet so ever so nicely, it cuts so beautifully. But However, the... this is more of a sweeping transition, so if that isn't properly sharpened, it'll get caught. Uh, but there's pros and cons. The uh, thickness of the tip of the blade at the tip is actually thinner here than on the Okatana. Yes. Which means it needs to push apart less material when cutting towards the tip. Yes. It's not an easy balance. Uh, no, yeah, it's kind of it's not an easy choice between them. They've got so many different pros and cons. All right, why don't we move on to the wood? Let's get some wood. So I'm going to give up the chopping for this particular one and uh, hold the wood. <laughs> so we've got <laughs> something to go. But something to mention is that these gloves are actually combat grade steel. So my hand's going to be really far away from the cut, but <laughs> on a mishap. We've got steel yes. protecting my fingers. And I'm specifically going to be aiming away from Nate here. I hope. N Nate will be holding the, you know, staff further away from him. This is Tasmanian oak, okay? And so we're going to be aiming just to cutting off little pit bits at the tip. And therefore, it actually should be a fairly consistent medium to test against should both swords. Because uh, it's the same density, or mo mostly same density all throughout. Yeah. And this is to hit something that's a lot more dense to just see how the reverb and how well the swords hold up. All right, so I'm just going to be coming down here with a decent amount of force, mind you. And again, I'm not trying to chop through it. I'm trying to pay attention to how it feels. Ready? Honestly, like, I mean, it's funny. I'm comparing it to other swords. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting more reverb. I barely felt, because we haven't stress really? tested this sword really. No, we haven't. I, I, I barely felt any reverb then. And that was some nice deep cuts. Like Tasmanian Oak is, is no joke, a really, really good wood, a hardwood, I believe. Yeah. Um, and that feels like it got about a third of the way through. So that's not bad. All right, let's try it with the Okatana. So I am chopping on the other side of where the cuts is. So if the cuts actually on either side approach, there's a chance I could chop off the the tip of the wood. That's not because I'm chopping all the way through with this one strike. Uh, we're we're gradually damaging it. But anyway, I nice accuracy, Shad. Look at that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I could not tell the difference. Really? No, I could not tell the difference. I can tell you from holding the stick, which is something we weren't expecting. But that felt more powerful. That yeah. felt that felt like it was throwing my arm a little more. So even though you might not have been able to tell the difference, did um, it get deeper though? It doesn't look like it. No, it doesn't look like it got maybe a touch, maybe a very, very minor amount. All right, well, uh, but it definitely felt like a, a little more shock. Let's uh, give Tyrant a go. Okay. 
so it's that, actually a pretty good chopper. And yeah. I think that comes down to the profile. It Quite has a bit possibly. of that, you know, that like that thick axe type. type it here. does. It's got like a nice wedge shape to it. And I feel it's like a little lenticular as well. Like it starts and it curls out. Yeah. Now, in terms of how that felt, uh, I've we've used a lot of katanas on wood. Yes. And that did not feel like that. <laughs> this felt a lot more, I felt it a lot more in my hand. It was a lot more harsh on it. Uh, really? Yes, but huh. I'll test out the other one and we'll see. We'll compare it one to one right okay. now. Again, nice accuracy. And we're getting that exact thing that Shad was talking about before with the cracks forming through. So don't worry about that. It's just that it was chopped on the other side. Uh, but this felt a lot better. Like, <laughs> I know you're gonna disagree, Shad, and I know he's gonna walk in now, but it felt better, it did. It just felt better. So I can tell really? you. Really? It felt better? Because I could honestly not tell the difference. I think it's because you weren't hitting hard enough. You know what I think it is? No, actually, I won't say that because I feel like both hits were around about the same strength. So, but what I will say is that I didn't notice that this being stronger the second time round. That said, the wood took the force for me. My arms didn't. It pre-cracked, as you can very yeah. well see. When I was hitting the, the, the wood, I felt this a lot more in the palm of my hand. It felt a sharper reverberation. I, I, look, because I, I was expecting that. I was honestly expecting more reverb because I certainly felt it with the Kriegsmesser, right? I felt nothing. Is it two-handed versus one-handed? I don't know. Now, for those people at maybe. home... And, maybe, and, and, maybe, maybe. You know, honestly, there was one thing that I didn't like is that the bumps on this actually dug into my palm a little bit more on the back end, and that, I didn't like that. Perhaps it is a one-handed versus two-handed. Do you mm. want to try one-handed or do you want me to try two-handed? Because be that both. actually might be what it is. Might be it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Hang on, gentlemen. Something to bring up is that the grip strength is not all the way through. You're not holding it like a hammer, as you mm. two well know. But not everyone at home will know you're not holding it really tight the whole way. You're really just getting that tension right at the end, right at the point of impact. Having it reverb through your hand is really yeah. right at the last second. It's, it's so gentle most of the way through. That is a good point. Thank you for bringing that up, Nate, because uh, some people might not know that. Well, like, you're not holding a sword with a death grip the no, whole time. No. It's very much nice loosey-goosey, mm. nice flow, and then when you get to the impact, you're not even death gripping it there. It's just mm. the, the appropriate amount. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and if you get the reverb, then that's a bad thing because it's, well, it's meant to be structure. Like I said, I felt no difference in reverb that time at all. One hand, two hand. Let's uh, do it. Okay. Let's do it. I felt the same reverb as I got on the first strike, mm -hmm. um, and I think that might be edge alignment because the second the strike. The first one felt like edge alignment for me too, yeah. but. The second strike on my first attempt, there was nothing, no reverb at all. And look, it could be because remember, this sword is more unforgiving in edge alignment. It really and is. And so even if the edge alignment is off a little bit, you'll probably get more reverb, but if your edge alignment is on point, you don't feel a thing. Something that I want to bring up is Shad always says he's a two handed fighter, but look at how close his single handed strikes were. You need to fight with single-handed more often, Shad. It's not all about strength, it's about precision as well. Whoa, 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 I'm not... I actually felt more reverb on this, on the first cut, than the second, and the bumps on the wrap actually were digging into my hand more uncomfortably that time. My turn. Your turn. I'll see what happens. I hate to say it, but I've got to say it again, that has more power. It, or did it? It just has more power. Like, it's, yeah, it must be the top heaviness of it or something. I don't quite know. But, but the cuts aren't deeper. No, but I can feel the transfer. Like, it's, instead of it feeling like it's reverbing or bouncing or like glancing, I feel like it's getting transferred through. I really do. What were your observations on the vibration? Similar results to the first one but not to the same extreme length. Mm -hmm. Like when I was handing the two-handed falchion, I did feel it a bit more in the, in the palm, but it wasn't, it wasn't as aggressive as the first time. Mm -hmm. With the katana, I could feel a little bit more, because obviously when you're using a two-handed strike, even if you're not trying to put more power into it, you just are by the very nature of using two arms. Uh, but they both felt very similar. The very katana, it felt nicer. It still felt nicer. It might just be the wrap here, but I'm finding this wrap more uncomfortable than the other katanas I've been using. Like it's just been digging into my hand more, especially this part here. Is it the Manuki? I can't remember I feel, the but yeah, it's just digging in, and uh, especially right there, the, these two bumps yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah. I'm not liking that. What we're really finding is 
personal preference, I'm thinking. Yeah, like, I, yeah, it was kind of personal preference. I mean, on average, I will always maintain that a katana is going to feel a bit nicer in the cut, mm -hmm. specifically. Well, I found that on the pool noodle, and that was me saying that. And when it comes to something like a harder material, I'm still going to kind of agree with that. However... Right, let's ramp it up to 10. You sure? Well, no, let's, well, when I say 10, let's go hit a tree. Reason why? There's no give. Basically, as soon as you hit in there, the wood might be a little softer, just that little bit, but the tree isn't going anywhere, so all the force goes straight back into the blade, and you can really feel it if, uh, well, depending on different types of swords, you get different results. For those of you who love trees, I love trees too, but I have a feeling it's going to survive this. We can get through it. We can get through it together, you'll be okay, and the tree will be okay, all right? Handled up that pretty well, actually. There was very little vibration. Uh, same results as the other katana we did on the tree cutting video. I think this has a good tight hill construction. I'm not feeling it. What was your observations? I'm compiling them right now. <laughs> Well, I got hit in the eye with a piece of bark. <laughs> <laughs> so, they were more similar than different. Like, like let's, I'm going to be honest here. They're more similar than different. However, this still felt a little nicer. Now, you, you can say that it digs mm. into your hands a little bit. That's fine, that's fine. But in terms of what I felt in the chop, this felt a little bit more nicer. It just felt like it dampened yeah. it a little bit. I mean, for me, I couldn't tell the difference. Or maybe I just have more acute you're, you're, you've got senses. very sensitive hands. But I'm sensitive to the bumps, though. In terms of the performance, though, identical. They're, they're, yeah, they were identical in, in terms of cutting into the wood. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's not a point to either one. They were just both mm -hmm. good at it. All right, let's go to final thoughts. Unlike longsword versus katana, which honestly is an unfair comparison from the get-go. The longsword is a longer sword from the beginning. It's double-edged, mm -hmm. which I already have a bias in that regard. Uh, is it long? Like, we're going to start, we're going to get into nitpicks. But, but, but now, no, no. Okay, so that's an unfair comparison. This is a much more fair comparison, really? where we have Okatana, which is a bigger version of a katana, so the reach and size issues are mitigated, versus two-handed falchion, even though it started with Kriegsmesser. There's a reason why we, like, this has a more traditional European handle construction and honestly it performed better as a result of that. We've cut heavy solid things with that Kriegsmesser and that handle is not very mm, comfortable. No. It would send reverbs right up your wrist mm. whereas these built properly. Built let's properly. let's be honest here Shad, the Kriegsmesser mm. handle is trash huh. and that's not a joke. Once you use it for like more than a minute to cut pool noodles or water bottles it hurts your hand. Mm -hmm. Unless you're wearing gloves. Yes but no, Do you have to I wear gloves I, I, any other no, side we use? Could you fix it if you rounded that, those sharp you edges? Could, you could, but it didn't come like that. No, it didn't. But that's not a criticism on all Kriegsmessers, it's a criticism on our Kriegsmesser. Sure. <laughs> In regards to these two very equivalent swords, that's the, they, are, they are actually very equivalent in a oh, yeah. lot of aspects that their, their, their handling and maneuverability felt very similar then in performance i found a little better benefit in in actual cutting with the maneuverability of that but more comfort in this um in terms of reverb i didn't notice a difference myself i noticed the difference every time we use a katana even when we break the katanas mm. they still just feel really nice because of the handle construction if i was to add any more points for like either one like a cross guard's better well like, i want to come to the cross guard because uh, cutting capacity they basically cut Right, I, they, I, yes. they were so close in cutting performance. Yes, but like we said, this one is a little bit more unforgiving. That's just how it is. This one is a little harder to cut. I with, guess, yeah, there is that, there is that. Yeah, it yeah, is I, a little more unforgiving. And to be honest, the amount of power distribution did feel a little more coming out of the katana. It really did. So It didn't matter so, whether it was one-handed, two-handed, or who swung. This one is more top-heavy. So you reckon it's a little bit more powerful, but as a result, a little less maneuverable. Mm -hmm. uh, also more forgiving in the cut mm -hmm. versus unforgiving in the cut. So these are all balancing out. It really is. Like for me, the the real deciding thing is the cross guard. <laughs> it's a battlefield weapon. Even though this was used on the battlefield historically, I feel like that's more of a battlefield weapon because you would rather injure your opponent to 98% mm -hmm. rather than 100% and be able to survive because you have a cross guard and better balanced hand. 
<laughs> I feel like he's about yeah. to say, you're not wrong, Nate. Yeah. But. I'm like, yes, the, yeah. <laughs> a lot of this comes down to preference. Like we've said that well, they balance out each other. There stuff. are. The only like deciding factor, if we want to put it that way, mm -hmm. is something like the cross guard. However, 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 you can put a cross guard on a katana. Like that's you possible. Can. Oh, you can. So, cool. uh, but I, I, before we jump onto that, there's a the thing. I will actually acknowledge that there are some circumstances in which you would not want a cross guard on a sword and a suba would be preferable. Go for it. You, you, got, you guys can't think of one? Off the top of my head, I would always rather a cross guard than a suba, but what were you thinking? Zombie apocalypse. Uh, uh, do zombies have swords? No! <laughs> Not, you know I mean? well, not modern zombies, medieval zombies maybe, okay. modern zombies no. Okay. And you don't, cross guard, you, it's don't a, you don't need, need it. it. Um, well, unless, uh, And then you would, the you, would, like, you would want that little bit more power in the katana, and you would want it to overcome any unforgiving like contact. So I would actually, this is true, in a zombie apocalypse between these two swords, I would actually pick the O-Katana. I power. would disagree. What? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> the tables have turned! What? <laughs> okay. And that comes down purely to steel. The composition and heat treatment No, of no, steel. no, no, we're, we're pretending that they're equivalent steels. Oh, equivalent steels? Yeah, spring uh, steels. Modern steels. Modern steels. Ooh, uh, I mean, in that case... Because right now, uh, this is an analysis... I would analysis. Just get either or. It wouldn't well, actually bother we're, me. we're going down to the geometry and design of the blades. It would, it would bother, bother mm -hmm. Tyrant. Even in a zombie apocalypse, he will want style. He'll pick a katana. Okay, if we're talking about like the only difference is like blade geometry, yeah, I'd probably want to go with the katana. That's Just because it's a bit. This, as, as someone who sharpens the swords here, a katanas are so easy to sharpen. They are very easy to sharpen and maintain compared to other swords. Zombie apocalypse. Yes, I would go with the O katana. Dueling self defense in a situation where you're fighting, facing other swords, cross guard, cross mm. guard, cross guard. I, like you can't go past the cross guard. Well, what if you combine the two? So, something like this. Oh yes, now, if you want to see how we built this thing, which combines the best of both worlds, ready? Like, we, we have a katana blade and a crosser. Look at what we have here, we have the simitana. You can see not only how it's built, but a deep dive discussion between me and Tyrant, because Tyrant hates this and I love it. Uh, on the pros and cons of uh, does this really benefit from it. So check out those videos, but there's also future videos coming up where one of the things, that a few things, few, there's not many, but there's one or two things I dislike about this sword, even though I love so much of everything else. Great, I can't wait to hear that. Oh, <laughs> well, it's the length. Oh yeah, you know, well, so, we're pretty so, so that, what yeah. we need to do then is to rehilt an O-Katana to you... make the ultimate sword. That's still a long way off. But <laughs> if you think these guys bickered a little bit in this video, you should see them in this one. Like seriously, uh, click, click, you will, it is, Kind of amusing. To and be let honest. us know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Which do you think won? I think it's it's mostly even. There's it's a tie. A, it's a basically a tie down to the personal preference of cross guard. Which one looks better? Katana. So katana wins. Uh, okay. I like the look of cross guards more. Oh, well that's just a preference thing. It is a preference thing. But objectively the katana looks better. No, it doesn't. So you know I think I'm gonna go test this one.